Ever wondered why that enigmatic INFJ friend of yours seems to be perpetually single, even when there's such a catch? Well, buckle up, folks, because we're about to dive deep into the fascinating world of the INFJ personality type and uncover the reasons behind their extended singlehood. Today, we're peeling back the layers of the INFJ mystique. You know, those rare, intuitive souls who always seem to have an uncanny understanding of the world around them? Yeah, those folks. We're going to explore why these incredible individuals often find themselves flying solo for longer than most. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll have a whole new perspective on the INFJ's journey to love and partnership. So, let's get this show on the road and unravel the mystery of the perpetually single INFJ. 1. The INFJ's Uncompromising Idealism Let's kick things off with a biggie the INFJ's unshakable idealism. Now, don't get me wrong, having high standards isn't a bad thing. But for INFJ, it's like they've got their ideals cranked up to 11, and sometimes that can be a real roadblock in the romance department. Picture this Sarah, an INFJ has been single for years. She's got this crystal clear vision of her perfect partner someone who's emotionally intelligent, deeply passionate about making the world a better place, and who gets her need for both deep connection and solitude. Oh, and they should probably be able to read her mind too, because why not? The thing is, INFJ aren't just looking for a partner, they're searching for their soulmate, their other half, their perfect puzzle piece. They've got this romanticized idea of love that's been shaped by books, movies, and their own vivid imaginations. And let me tell you, reality has a hard time living up to those lofty expectations. But here's where it gets really interesting this idealism isn't just about finding the perfect partner. INFJ also hold themselves to impossibly high standards. They want to be the best version of themselves before they even think about bringing someone else into the picture. It's like they're waiting to evolve into their final form before they feel worthy of love. And let's not forget about the INFJ's knack for seeing potential in others. They might meet someone who ticks most of their boxes, but instead of accepting them as they are, they see the person they could become with a little encouragement read complete personality overhaul. Spoiler alert that rarely ends well. This uncompromising idealism can lead to a lot of disappointment and frustration. INFJ might find themselves constantly comparing real-life potential partners to the idealized version in their heads. And surprise, surprise, reality often falls short. But here's the kicker as much as this idealism can keep INFJ single. It's also one of their most beautiful qualities. It's what drives them to strive for deep, meaningful connections and to never settle for less than they deserve. The trick is finding a balance between those sky-high ideals and the beautiful imperfections of real-life love. 2. The INFJ's Need for Deep, Meaningful Connections All right, let's dive into another biggie that keeps INFJ in the single lane their insatiable hunger for deep, meaningful connections. Now I'm not talking about your run-of-the-mill, let's grab coffee and chat about the weather kind of connection. No siree, INFJ are after the soul-bearing, mind-melding. I feel like I've known you for a thousand lifetimes type of bond. I meet Alex, an INFJ who's been navigating the dating scene for years. He's been on more first dates than he can count, but they all seem to fizzle out faster than a damp firecracker. Why? Because for Alex, small talk feels like nails on a chalkboard. He's yearning for those deep, philosophical conversations that make time stand still. You see... INFJ have this uncanny ability to see right through the superficial stuff. They're like emotional X-ray machines, always looking for the deeper meaning behind every word and gesture. And in a world of swipe-right culture and speed dating, that depth can be harder to find than a needle in a haystack. But here's where it gets really interesting. This need for depth doesn't just apply to romantic relationships. INFJ crave meaningful connections in all areas of their lives. They'd rather have a small circle of close friends than a large network of acquaintances. Quality over quantity, always. This hunger for depth can make dating a real challenge for INFJ. They might come on too strong too soon, diving into deep topics when their date just wants to keep things light and breezy. Or they might find themselves bored and disengaged when the conversation stays on the surface level. And let's not forget about the INFJ's intuitive nature. They're constantly reading between the lines, picking up on subtle cues and unspoken emotions. This can be a superpower in relationships, but it can also lead to overthinking and misinterpretation. An innocent comment from a potential partner might send the INFJ spiraling into a pit of analysis, trying to uncover the true meaning behind the words. 
But here's the thing, this need for deep connection is also what makes INFJ such incredible partners when they do find their match. They have an almost supernatural ability to understand and empathize with their loved ones. They're the ones who remember the little details, who can sense when something's off before you even realize it yourself. The challenge for INFJ is finding someone who not only appreciates this depth but craves it just as much as they do. It's about finding that rare individual who's willing to peel back the layers, to dive deep into the ocean of emotions and ideas that make up the INFJ's inner world. 3. The INFJ's Struggle with Vulnerability Now let's talk about something that really throws a wrench in the INFJ's love life their complicated relationship with vulnerability. It's like they're caught in this constant tug of war between their desire for deep connection and their fear of getting hurt. Picture this Emma, an INFJ has met someone she really clicks with. The conversation flows effortlessly, there's that spark of chemistry and she can feel herself starting to fall. But instead of embracing those feelings, she starts to panic. Her mind goes into overdrive, coming up with a million and one ways this could all go wrong. You see, INFJ are paradoxical creatures when it comes to vulnerability. On one hand, they crave those deep, intimate connections that require openness and honesty. But on the other hand, they've got these iron-clad emotional walls that would make Fort Knox look like a house of cards. This fear of vulnerability often stems from the INFJ's sensitive nature. They feel things deeply like oceanic depths deeply. And while this sensitivity allows them to empathize and connect with others on a profound level, it also means they can get hurt, really hurt. Many INFJ have had experiences in the past where they opened up, only to be misunderstood, rejected, or betrayed. And let me tell you, for an INFJ, that kind of pain doesn't just sting it cuts to the very core of their being. So, they build these emotional fortresses, complete with moats and drawbridges, to protect their tender hearts. But here's where it gets really interesting, this fear of vulnerability doesn't just keep INFJ from opening up to others. It can also make them hyper-aware of the vulnerabilities of potential partners. They might find themselves pulling away if they sense that the other person isn't ready for the kind of deep, intimate connection they're looking for. This struggle with vulnerability can manifest in all sorts of ways in the dating world. INFJ might come across as aloof or distant, even when they're internally melting into a puddle of emotions. They might sabotage budding relationships by nitpicking flaws or finding reasons why it just won't work out anything to avoid the risk of getting hurt. And let's not forget about the INFJ's tendency to idealize relationships. They might spend so much time dreaming about the perfect, vulnerability-free romance that they miss out on the beautiful, messy reality of love right in front of them. But here's the kicker when INFJ do finally let their guard down. When they find someone they trust enough to be truly vulnerable with, it's like watching a flower bloom and fast forward. All that pent up emotion, all those deep thoughts and feelings they've been holding back at all comes rushing out in a torrent of connection and intimacy. The challenge for INFJ is learning to balance their need for emotional safety with their desire for deep connection. It's about finding the courage to lower those drawbridges, to let people in even when there's a risk of getting hurt. Because at the end of the day, true intimacy requires vulnerability, and that's something even the most guarded INFJ secretly yearns for. 4. The INFJ's Introverted Nature and Need for Solitude Alright folks, let's tackle another big reason why INFJ often find themselves flying solo their introverted nature and their almost sacred need for alone time. Now, don't get me wrong, INFJ can be social butterflies when they want to be, but at their core, they're introverts through and through. Meet Tom, an INFJ who's been single for a while. He's charming, empathetic, and can light up a room with his insights and dry wit. But after a night of socializing, even with people he genuinely enjoys, he feels like he's run a marathon. All he wants to do is retreat to his cozy apartment, curl up with a good book, and recharge his social batteries. You see, for INFJ, solitude isn't just a preference, it's a necessity. It's in those quiet moments alone that they process their thoughts and feelings, make sense of the world around them, and tap into their rich inner lives. It's like their own personal charging station, and without it, they start to feel frazzled and out of sync. But here's where it gets tricky in the dating world. In a society that often equates being social with being happy and successful, the INFJ's need for solitude can be misunderstood. Potential partners might interpret their need for alone time as disinterest or aloofness. Or worse, they might take it personally, thinking the INFJ is pulling away from them specifically. And let's not forget about the INFJ's selective social nature. 
They're not the type to have a jam-packed social calendar or a phone that's constantly buzzing with notifications. They prefer deep, one-on-one -on -one interactions to large group gatherings. This can make it challenging to meet new people or to maintain the kind of active social life that often leads to romantic opportunities. But here's where it gets really interesting. The INFJ's introverted nature doesn't just affect how they meet potential partners. It also influences what they're looking for in a relationship. They need someone who understands and respects their need for solitude, someone who's comfortable with companionable silence and doesn't need constant interaction to feel connected. This can be a tall order in a world that often prioritizes extroverted traits. INFJ might find themselves feeling drained or overwhelmed in relationships with more extroverted partners who don't understand their need for quiet time. Or they might struggle to find partners who are secure enough to give them the space they need without feeling neglected. And let's talk about the INFJ's home, their sanctuary. They put a lot of thought and effort into creating a space that reflects their inner world and provides the perfect environment for recharging. The idea of sharing that space, of potentially compromising that sacred solitude, can be a major hurdle in considering a serious relationship. But here's the thing when INFJ do find someone who gets their introverted nature, who respects their need for solitude, and even shares it. It's like hitting the relationship jackpot. There's something magical about finding a partner you can be alone together with, someone who understands that silence can be just as intimate as conversation. The challenge for INFJ is finding a balance between their need for solitude and their desire for connection. It's about learning to communicate their needs clearly, to set boundaries without building walls. And most importantly, it's about finding someone who not only accepts their introverted nature but appreciates it as one of their many unique and beautiful qualities. 5. The INFJ's Complex Inner World now let's dive into one of the most fascinating aspects of the INFJ personality, their rich, complex inner world. Imagine a universe contained within a single mind, filled with swirling galaxies of thoughts, emotions and ideas. That's the INFJ's inner landscape. And let me tell you, it's both a blessing and a curse when it comes to relationships. Meet Lily, an INFJ who's been single for years. From the outside she seems like she's got it all together, successful career, great friends, interesting hobbies. But inside her mind, it's like a never-ending stream of consciousness, constantly analyzing, imagining, and creating. You see, INFJ are the ultimate daydreamers. They spend a lot of time in their heads, exploring abstract concepts, pondering the meaning of life, and imagining countless possible futures. It's like they've got this internal IMAX theater playing 24-7, and sometimes reality just can't compete with the epic movies in their minds. This rich inner world is what makes INFJ so creative, insightful, and empathetic. But it can also make it challenging for them to stay present in the here, and now which, last time I checked, is where most dating happens. INFJ might find themselves zoning out during conversations, not because they're bored, but because something the other person said triggered a whole train of thought. Or they might struggle to articulate their complex inner experiences, feeling frustrated when words fail to capture the depth of what they're thinking and feeling. But here's where it gets really interesting this complex inner world doesn't just affect how INFJ interact with potential partners. It also shapes what they're looking for in a relationship. They need someone who can keep up with their mental gymnastics, someone who's willing to explore those abstract realms with them. This can be a tall order in the dating world. INFJ might find themselves feeling misunderstood or out of sync with partners who are more focused on the concrete, day-to-day -day aspects of life. They might struggle to find someone who appreciates their need for deep, philosophical conversations at 2 a.m. And let's not forget about the INFJ's vivid imagination when it comes to relationships. They often have these elaborate fantasies about how their perfect relationship would look and feel. The problem? Reality rarely lives up to those technicolor daydreams, leading to disappointment and disillusionment. But here's the kicker when INFJ do find someone who can navigate their inner world who's willing to dive deep into those abstract realms with them. It's like finding a fellow explorer in a vast, uncharted territory. There's an incredible sense of connection and understanding that comes from sharing those inner landscapes. The challenge for INFJ is learning to bridge the gap between their rich inner world and the external reality of relationships. It's about finding ways to express their complex thoughts and feelings, to invite others into their inner universe. And most importantly, it's about finding someone who not only tolerates their daydreaming nature but is fascinated by it, someone who wants to be a part of those inner adventures.